Hey guys, welcome to Off The Great Wall, it's Mike. It's Dan. Before we start, follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, all the other good stuff, and uh, don't forget about the Double Chin Show. That's right. That's really awesome. You know, Dan, when it comes to food, a three-course meal is uh, pretty standard, right? Yeah, that's right. Unless, of course, you're in New York now and they got like the five, the 10, the 21 course meals. It's crazy. And they're really expensive too. And those are all no big deal, really, you know, because I can take down easily 21 courses. Ain't got nothing on me. I would just kill that thing. That's probably true because we all know Mike is a monster when it comes to eating. But still, I doubt you're a match for the biggest feast documented in Chinese history, a whopping 108 courses. Okay, that's what I call a full course dinner. And admittedly, uh, that might even be a little more than I can take, but I'll try it. Uh, yeah, I'd be done after like the third course. You'd be done just looking at it. Yeah. Well guys, what we're talking about is Man Han Quan Shi or Manchu Han Imperial Feast is one of the grandest and most lavish meals in Chinese history. It consists of at least 108 unique dishes eaten in six banquets over the course of three days, featuring cooking methods from all over Imperial China. I just got really hungry right now. <laughs> and not just anyone's invited. This feast was reserved for the top dogs only. We're talking about emperors and other members of the Imperial court. Then the feast itself was divided by rank into an inter-palace feast, which only the Imperial family and officials with merits could attend, and the outer palace feast, which meant that you were pretty cool, but you know, I'm not that cool. Because you weren't in the inner palace. You don't even get to go into the palace. Yeah, exactly. That's like the kitty stable. But it's still better than anyone else who couldn't even get into exactly. that Exactly. I would be fine just getting the scraps. I would be fine just smelling the feast. Yeah. So why hold this huge feast in the first place, you might ask? I mean, other than to have an excuse to have all this food. Turns out there's quite a bit of history behind this event. The feast originated during the Qing Dynasty when the Manchu people conquered China and established power. Manchu rulers attempted to integrate the Manchu, who were the minority at the time, and the Han, China's majority ethnic group, to reduce the frequent conflicts and power struggles that popped up, and the folk customs and cultures of the two increasingly blended together. So in one massive unification effort, Emperor Kangxi, one of the greatest emperors of the Qing Dynasty, decided to hold a banquet for his 66th birthday, bringing together both groups of people and their cuisines. Because nothing brings people together quite like food. Am I right? That's right! So the banquet consisted of the finest of both Manchu and Han dishes, and served over 2,500 guests from both ethnic groups. As for the types of dishes served, well, we'll leave that judgment up to you. Yo, you think there were some spicy dishes served? Yo, there better have been in some hot pot. Cause I'm walking out if there's not. I wanna see at least a, one hot pot. Yeah. The feast included what was called the 32 delicacies, dishes made from the rarest and most exotic ingredients. And by rare and exotic, we don't just mean things like chicken hearts or jellyfish, no, 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 no. That's nothing compared to what they ate. For example, there was the Eight Mountain Treasures, which sounds kind of harmless, right? Yeah, like maybe some mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it includes camel's humps, uh, bear's paws, live monkey's brains, uh, apes lips, leopard fetuses, rhino tails, and deer tendons. So. The one I would eat out of all that would probably be deer tendons. Yeah, that sounds say. the most harmless to me. Yeah. Or well, how about this one? Eight land treasures. That, that sounds pretty harmless, like, right? Like cows. Yeah, like or chickens, right? Yeah. But this one had goat brains, chicken brains, duck brains, rare birds, uh, oh, mushrooms. Or the eight sea treasures. Maybe like a, I don't know, a sea bass, you think? Nah, no? I, I think it's going to be a little more extreme okay. than that. Well, in this feast, sea treasures means sea cucumbers, which okay. does sounds That's fine. Okay, yeah. Shark fins, right. birds' nests, and other fresh shellfish and various seafood. So that's... I'd be at this table right here. But exotic delicacies aside, I still wouldn't mind, you know, taking a seat at this feast because uh, this sounds awesome. Even the other dishes were only of the highest quality and best taste. For example, the roast succulent pigs, or little piglets, were required to weigh 12 to 13 kilos before slaughter and were fattened up with porridge for at least two to three days before the feast.
Now that's planning ahead, and at the actual feast, the eating rituals involved there were also really elaborate. Guests ate with finely crafted bronze utensils, and the table was decorated with fruit and porcelain ware shaped like various animals. You know, that's probably my favorite part is uh, looking nice that day and using the fancy schmancy porcelain diner ware. Yeah, you do that and I'll sit by the succulent pig. <laughs> anyway, guests began by washing their faces and hands in copper basins of water and drinking a cup of fragrant tea. Then, bring on the food. First up, four types of wine and four cold dishes were followed by four hot dishes. That's weird because four is not really a really uh, yeah, that's true. fortuitous that's true. number. That's true. Anyways, I'm not going to question the uh, will of the emperor. And then course after course after course, the food just kept on coming. It must have felt like paradise. The delicacies were broken up by small sets of snack foods to paste the meal and clean the palate. I guess all those brings and bear paws can get a bit overwhelming even for a member of the imperial court. Yeah. You know, I also like the fact that, you know, between food, they have food. Yeah, I like that too. That's your dream right there. Yeah, it is. Finally, guys, at the end of the banquet, the guests would again wash their faces and hands in fresh basins of water and then presumably laze around in massive food comas for the rest of the day or month. Or the rest of my life. Yeah. Okay, so maybe, you know, I can't go the rest of my life without ever eating again, but I wouldn't be surprised if they really did, you know, crash and burn for about a week after that because I would. Just imagine all that food means big food coma. Absolutely. After this huge success of the first Manhan Chenxi, it became popular throughout China. And banquets were held for a variety of reasons, any big celebration or festival. Different variations arose for different occasions and different regions of China. Unfortunately, not much of the great feast had survived to modern day. Most books and records detailing the feast were burned during the Cultural Revolution, so the few replicas still attempted today are not completely authentic. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Replacement ingredients are common, especially since many of the original animals used are now endangered species. Yeah, that sucks, huh? Mm. So eating a leopard fetus, not a good idea. To be honest, it's not that appetizing either, so it's all good. Nowadays, while an actual Manhan Chenxi is extremely rare, the term is used as an expression where named for any large feast, like a uh, dinner gala. Yeah, or one of your epic barbecues. That's right. So let me ask you, would you eat a Manhan Chenxi? Well, honestly, I would be really uh, uncomfortable because, you know, like, I, I would show up dressed nice to the banquet, but when it comes time to eat the leopard fetuses, I wouldn't do it. Here's what I would do. I would okay. show up, definitely. Right. And uh, I would just be the pickiest eater ever. But here's my question, though. Yeah. Back in the day, if you were picky, would you get punished? Like, no, would you get thrown out? they won't know. The emperor's not gonna look and see what you ate, you what eat? you didn't eat. You don't think the emperor is walking by like, my the emperor how did is you eating, enjoy it? The emperor is enjoying his <laughs> monkey brings and wine. He's not looking at you. Dude, so I, you're just sitting there and you're like, succulent pig, yes please. Yeah. Uh, monkey bring, no thanks. So passed on to the next person beside you. I would and feel- And then uh, get some, uh, I don't know, I stewed feel like, beef. I would feel like the guards are looking over my shoulder making sure this I ate This is everything. not a punishment. It's a festival, man. I don't know, It's dude. only a punishment when you show up to my barbecue and don't eat something I cook, and then you're in trouble, bro. But that, that wouldn't happen because the barbecues right. are awesome. Because they're awesome. Best uh, burger ever. Yeah, uh -huh. Chicken wings. That's yeah. right. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let us know your comments about the Manhan Shenshi and what's your favorite exotic dish. See you later. Peace.